Welcome to Washington Hospital Today, dedicated to informing residents about healthcare topics and issues. Through programs featuring community forums and free health and wellness classes, our goal is to empower community members with the information needed to make informed health decisions. Washington Hospital has been providing health care to the residents of the Washington Township Healthcare District for the past 60 years. Today's presenters are Luann Sudweste and Macaria Meyer. Luann Sudweste is a registered nurse and certified diabetes educator with Washington Hospital Healthcare System. Macaria Meyer is a registered dietitian and certified diabetes educator with Washington Hospital Healthcare System. So today we're going to be talking about modifying those traditional Filipino foods to make it more heart healthy and more diabetes friendly. So a lot of people have diabetes. In fact, let's go look at the diabetes statistics here. The prevalence of diabetes. There are 30. 0.3 million Americans living with diabetes. That is 9.4% of the population. 30.3 million, out of those 30.3 million, 7.2 million people are undiagnosed. 25% of Americans age 65 years and older have diabetes. That is one out of four adults age 65 and older have diabetes. And there are new cases every year. 1.5 million Americans are diagnosed with diabetes every year. And of that, more than half of the new cases are aged, adults aged 45 to 64 years old. Yes, at this rate that we're going, by 2050, one out of three people will have diabetes. That coincides with the one out of three adults who have prediabetes. Prediabetes, basically your blood sugars are high, but it's not high enough to be diagnosed for diabetes. So we can look at California's diabetes epidemic and a, more than four million people in California have diabetes. It's estimated more than a million of them have diabetes and don't even know it. More than 10 million people in California have prediabetes. And every year, new cases of diabetes, just in California, 263,000 people are diagnosed with diabetes. Uncontrolled diabetes, that's the key, uncontrolled diabetes causes a lot of internal damage, including blindness, heart attack, stroke, kidney damage, nerve damage, infections, amputations, the list just goes on. So the main thing is to control the blood sugars. So let's go ahead and take a look at this graph here. And they took the percentage of adults age 18 years and older that's diagnosed with diabetes. And they've separated it by racial and ethnic groups. And you could see here American Indians, Asians, Hispanics, African Americans, and Caucasians. And when looking at that graph, Filipinos, right, we would be placed in the Asian category and you're like, okay, well, it only affects about 8% of Asians. That actually is, doesn't sound too bad if you wanna compare it to those of Hispanic descent or American Indian or African American, right? But if you look at this graph where they've actually separated the Asians into different subgroups, and Filipinos, oh, a lot of Filipinos have diabetes and it's actually higher than those who are of Native American descent or Latinos or African Americans. So it's actually not a good idea to just combine all the Asians into one category because it really masks 
the health disparity that's going on with Filipinos. We can look at Alameda County alone, and there are a lot of Asians that live in Alameda County. Almost 30% uh, are Asian and live in Alameda County. And then this map, the blue area, you could see Fremont, Union City, Newark, Hayward. The blues marks the places where a lot of Asians are predominantly in. And then compare it to the diabetes mortality and look at that dark orange or orange area, and that's where a lot of people who have diabetes. So let's look at Filipino American facts. Filipinos, there's a lot of us here in America. Um, Filipinos are the second largest Asian subgroup in the United States. On an average, one out of five Asians is Filipino. Most Filipinos live here in California or Hawaii, but California is home to the largest Filipino population with more than one million people here in California. Here's something interesting. Filipino women have a high prevalence of diabetes and metabolic syndrome, despite the fact that 90% of Filipino women were not defined as obese according to Western standards. So with Western standards, obese, the definition of obese is a BMI of more than 30. So a lot of Filipino women don't even fit the category of being obese and having a BMI of more than 30. Despite that, there's still a high prevalence of diabetes and metabolic syndrome. And Filipinos are, were also found to have the highest prevalence of obesity and type 2 diabetes compared to all Asian subgroups and non-Hispanic whites. In addition to genetic factors, risk factors for Filipinos that contribute to health disparities include high sedentary rates and high fat diets. Why is Filipino food so good? We get a lot of influences from different cultures, including Chinese, Spanish, Malaysia. And let's face it, there is just no gathering of Filipinos without food. We love food and we go all out, especially when it comes to big celebrations like baptisms and weddings and birthdays and white rice, right? White rice is a Filipino food staple. It is included in almost every meal. It's better to substitute the white rice for brown rice. Brown rice has more fiber, it's higher in fiber, and it is hard to change, make that change from white rice to brown rice, but you can, it can be done and you can do it slowly by even mixing the white rice and the brown rice together. Most of Filipino cooking is done by sauteing with garlic and olive oil or lard and combining all those ingredients resulting in this yummy, sour, salty uh, taste. Some common ingredients for Filipino food is bagoong, right, patis. I mean, how do you eat kare kare without bagoong? I love bagoong. However, bagoong and patis, oh, it's so salty. Um, soy sauce and vinegar and calamansi. So, how do we make Filipino dishes more healthier, right? As I said earlier, patis and bagoong, very high in salt. Instead, we can use chili peppers, garlic, ginger, basil or calamansi. When making stews or soup, you always want to use low sodium broths. Uh, try to avoid those bouillon cubes, right? They are very high in salt. No added salt canned tomatoes and try to use whole wheat noodles and definitely just load up on the vegetables. When you're making your pancit, load up on the vegetables. When it comes to meat, you can make it healthier by choosing lean cuts of meat. This might be kind of hard for some people too because when I was taught how to cook, 
I was taught to go to the store and get two pounds of belly fat <laughs> and use one pound to make your sinagang and the other pound to make your adobo. Instead, we want to cut the fat. We want you to trim the fat before cooking. Or you could just swap the meat for tofu or seafood. When it comes to cooking, we suggest to grill, bake, or broil. Uh, steam or roast, but if you do have to fry, um, use non-stick pans or cooking spray instead of oil. Uh, now we're going to go more into the food, and Makaria, our dietitian, will go into more details about that. I'm Makaria. I'm the dietitian here. I've been here for the last 37 years. It's so nice to be, I guess, to have the statistics show us how fat and how sweet we Filipinos are, right? <laughs> but we didn't get there because we were following a very good diet. So as Luann said, our typical Filipino diet is high salt, high fat, very toxic, right? So today, we're gonna focus in on what foods that are better for us so that we prevent the long-term complications of diabetes. So I wanted to show this because Vida told me one time, said, Makaria, our Filipinos you know, eat too much rice. Can you tell them not to do that? And I go, are you kidding me? <laughs> I said, let's just tell the baby not to cry <laughs> or not to breathe, okay? Our food is designed to eat with rice. And you know, it's nice to say, hey, instead of white rice, use brown rice. Instead of using patis, use herbs and spices. And you know what? I've been doing this education for so long. And I'm looking at my Filipino patients, they're looking right through me. And they say, ano naman yan? Walang lasa. <laughs> that means it has no taste. That's not Filipino food without these things, okay? But just like the title of my talk, it says eat but not too much, okay? In the Philippines, if your poverty is stricken, you're gonna eat what is in front of you. Here in America, we have a lot more choices, right? Okay, so as you can see here, what do we got? We got rice on every single dish. And look on the far right there. That's like an egg dish, right? But what's underneath there? It's rice, so we even eat rice at breakfast, okay? The problem with rice is that it can really make your blood sugar go up really high for a long period of time. When you're first diagnosed with diabetes, the first line of treatment is diet and exercise, okay? And then we have you check your blood sugar. That's an important piece because how do you know whether your diet or your exercise regimen is working, right? Okay, so if for example your blood sugar is still high when you go back to the doctor, and there are ways to find out, okay? You give him your uh, blood sugar monitoring data and he'll take a look at it. And if it's still not low enough, based on the guidelines that we have out there, okay, then the medication is given. But the medication does not take the place of diet and exercise. Most people will say, well, I'm taking my pills so I don't have to watch my diet or I don't have to exercise. Where in reality, what we want you to do is to follow, continue to follow your diet, continue to move, do your exercise, and then add the medication. It doesn't take the place of the diet and exercise. Sorry. Okay, so sometimes people don't wanna check their blood sugar. They'll come into me and say, well, my doctor said I don't have to check yet. I go, well, then how do you know whether you are responding to the diet and the exercise? So, I know this is probably not speaking to a lot of you guys. This glycemic goals in diabetes, what your blood sugar level should be. So there's the American Diabetes Association guidelines, that's the ADA. This is what we follow here in the outpatient diabetes program. And then there's another one called the American Association Clinical Endocrinology Guidelines. And these blood sugar guidelines are stricter. And the reason why they're stricter is because this organization uh, wants us to have strict blood sugar levels so that, a lo so that the long-term complication of diabetes is lessened. So fasting or the fasting glucose, that would be your blood sugar when you first get up in the morning 
and also before you eat your next meal or before meals. So that number should be anywhere from 70 to 130. And some doctors, they want that to be under 110. But what is really, what is the normal range for somebody who doesn't have diabetes? It's about 70 to 99, right? So really when patients say, well, when I get up in the morning, my blood sugar is always low. I go, well, what is low? Oh, it's like 100. So that's really not low, okay? So that's where we want it to be at. And also before each meal, if you were to check it, it should be around that uh, range as well. And then the postprandial glucose is your blood sugar after you eat. And um, we choose the two hours afterwards. And when you check there, it should be under 180 if you're going with the ADA guidelines or under 140. So that's closer to the normal if you didn't have diabetes, that 140. So remember, the closer you are to the normal, okay, the better it is. But sometimes it's not possible. And then also every three months, a doctor will check your blood sugar with what they call a uh, hemoglobin A1C, just to see what your average blood sugar has been for those three months. Because you're only checking once in a while, right? You don't have, it's like a, a, a snapshot when you check your blood sugar. Like for example, you, you check your blood sugar in the morning and it's 100. And you go to IHOP and have their special, <gasps> right? And I've seen those special, and you eat the whole thing. Well, my blood sugar was only 100, you know, in the morning. Well, you know what? After you eat, that 100 is no longer 100. It's probably 300, but you're not looking. So your A1C will show that on the average when it's, it comes time to check it. So this is what we want you to be at, okay? When you first wake up in the morning, 70 to 130, before every meal, let's say after you haven't eaten anything for like maybe three to four hours. Okay, if you were to check, let's say before lunch or before dinner, it should be about the same too as fasting, okay? Unless you've eaten a snack just before, well, you know it's gonna be high. And then two hours after, it should be under 180. Why is that? Why do we check at two hours? See, we want you to, we wanna know what your highest blood sugar is after you've eaten. So you know at two hours, it, that's the highest ever, okay? And it's gonna go down after that. See, a lot of times people don't want to check their blood sugar because they think that it always goes high. Well, after you eat, it's always going to go high, but you don't want it to go up too high. That's why we have these numbers to guide you with. That's why we want you to check your blood sugar. So let's say you have a favorite meal that you like to eat all the time, and you want to know what your blood sugar reading is after you eat that. But you want to check before that meal. Okay, let's say your biggest meal is at lunchtime and you eat like, let's say, more rice than you're supposed to eat. Well, let's just check it out. So do a before meal blood sugar. So if your blood sugar is 100 going into that meal, and let's say you ate the food that you normally like to eat, two hours later, it's like 150, 160. Well, you know that that's an okay amount that you've eaten, okay? But if you were at 100, let's say, or within that normal range or, or um, what we consider acceptable, and two hours later, you're over 200, are you going to continue to do that? But if you allow your blood sugar to go up too high, too long, chronically, and A1C higher than the 7% that we showed you, your risk of complications go up, okay? High blood sugar level affects every single part of our body. The heart, you can have heart disease, okay? Have heart attack, stroke. Okay, you, you, it can also affect circulation. So you end up having a, a wound that doesn't heal because of the high blood sugar level. So it's also important, that's why when you go to our outpatient diabetes program, we have you check your feet, right? Every day you've got to do that. Because when you've had diabetes for a long period of time and you may have decreased sensation in your, on your feet, you could be walking around with a wound there and not know it because it, you're numb. So you have to inspect it, okay? And make sure you go to the doctor when you see even a little teeny tiny wound because that can get big in no time. And this is really when we really want you to have strict blood sugar control. And it can also affect the eyes, okay? The um, high blood sugar level. So over time, you can get what they call retinopathy. And then what is this? It can affect your kidneys. There's a lot of Filipino 
that have renal failure end up going to dialysis. Okay, so really keep an eye on that blood sugar and keep it strict. Because really, the diabetic diet is a healthy diet. I remember somebody telling me, he said, well, I'm glad I got diabetes because it just made me take a look at what I've been eating and it made me just healthier. So it made their diabetes actually be the one to kind of um, wake them up. So now what do we do as far as food goes, okay? Because you know what? You can take your medications, that's easy. You can check your blood sugar, that's easy. But you know what, do you eat the same thing all the time? And do you eat at the same time all the time? Because there's a lot of other things to do rather than fixate on what you're gonna eat, right? You wanna eat when you want to. See, when you have diabetes, you have, a, you have to be a little bit more regimented. So um, the very basic way to follow a diet is what they call a diabetes portion plate. And also in this plate, they'll tell you that, you know, you want to balance your meals. It's not so much like, um, oh, okay, you only want to have so many grams of carbohydrates here and there. So this one, kind of, it's, it's like, okay, you take your plate and you fill half of this plate. This is a nine-inch plate, by the way, okay? So you take a nine-inch plate, not one of those big serving plate, all right? And you take half of that plate. And if you fill that up with basically like vegetables, all right, vegetables are your a food group that is going to give you the least amount of calories and the lowest amount of carbohydrates. So you can eat as much vegetables as you want on this diabetes portion of plate. So the other half of the plate is divided again in half. And so a quarter of that plate is your protein, your beef, chicken, turkey, lamb, pork, fish, eggs, cheese. That's just your protein food that doesn't have carbohydrates. And on the other quarter of the plate, this is where we have to count. This is where it matters. So a quarter of your nine inch plate should be your carbohydrate foods. And in Filipino cuisine, that's your rice. Yeah, so outside of the plate, we've got your beverage, and we encourage that you have calorie-free beverage. We're pushing for people to drink more water. Okay, and on the other side of, the, of this placemat here, we've got the milk or the dairy group. With the, under this group, the carbohydrate in this food group would be your fluid milk and your yogurt. And then, of course, we've got the fruit. So as you can see here, we want you to have balanced meals that's going to give you, is going to give you the proper nutrients, vitamins and minerals. Okay, so I want you to keep this in mind the whole entire time we're going through all of these different little foods. Okay, another way that you can follow the diet is called carbohydrate counting. So this is mainly for people, let's say, with um, an insulin regimen, with a meal insulin that they have to take. What you can do is that you can calculate out how many grams of carbohydrate that you're gonna eat for that meal, and you can match it up with the amount of insulin it's gonna take so that your blood sugar doesn't go up over the goals that we talked about earlier. If you feel like you need to have more information on this, you wanna know about this, have your doctor refer you to our outpatient diabetes education program, okay? Okay, so in this carbohydrate counting, let's just take out the foods that we don't need to count. So there's no carbohydrates in the water, right? Or if you have tea or if you have coffee. So now we take away the protein part because we're not counting that because that is a non-carbohydrate food in this plate. The next is we take away the, the uh, carbohydrates that's in the vegetables because we would rather have you eat more vegetables than really fix it and count that. So what do we have left? We've got the starch, whatever that fits in that category. Doesn't have to be rice as we will go later. Then we have the fluid milk and then we have the fruit. Fruits are basically all carbohydrates. Very little protein and no fat, unless you're adding something to it. So all fruits and juices are all carbohydrates and they could potentially increase your blood sugar if you eat too much of it. Same thing with fluid milk. If you put, let's say, milk in your coffee, okay, or milk in your cereal, you count that. That is a carbohydrate food. So let's go look at the Filipino vegetables. So it doesn't have to be, you know, vegetables that 
that you see in a regular Safeway. You can go to Ranch 99 and, and um, you can pick all kinds of vegetables there and you can put in that category right there. We have upo, we've got talong, we've got sitao. Okay, those all fit into those vegetables that you don't have to count in with your carbohydrate counting. And you can prepare it in many different ways. You can saute it as long as that's all you're adding to it. Okay, you can use garlic and onions to saute. You can put tomatoes because those are all under that vegetable group, right? So, so far, we're not really eating that much carbohydrate just yet. But are you feeling full already? Okay, because people think, well, that's not that much food to eat. Well, then you need to eat more vegetables because this is what's going to fill you up and you're not counting that as much in, as far as carbohydrate goes. So in the Filipino, um, let's say, cuisine, we can make it into a soup. You can have like a, you know, a broth, a low sodium broth, you can add all kinds of vegetables in there if you feel like you need to have more volume with your meals. So this is still not counting as much, as much in the carbohydrate content yet of that meal. So now let's take a look at this plate again. So we already know what we're gonna do with the vegetable part, right? Okay, let's try, what about the starches? So we talk about the rice. So if you put the amount of rice that we want you to have in that little quarter, that's about a third of a cup, maybe no more than a half a cup. If the doctor says you can only have 45 grams of carbohydrates or 60 grams of carbohydrates, let's say for the meal, okay, a third of a cup of rice, cooked rice, is already 15 grams of carbohydrates. Okay, so if you, let's say, if a half a cup fits in there, that's already 22 grams of carbohydrates. So it's just like having an allowance. You know, how do you want to use all your carbohydrates? You want to use it all as rice? You can do that. You can check your blood sugar before and two hours after and see how you responded to that. If you want to use all your 60 grams of carbohydrate as rice, then all you have in this in this plate will be your vegetables and your meat. So you either have rice or pancit, right? So what's happening if you're having both? <laughs> okay, now let's say you have 60 grams of carbs that you can have. Let's say, okay, well, I really do wanna have that pancit. Oh, and I probably want a pandesal too in that meal. Okay, you have, you have 60 grams, let's say. So if a third of a cup is gonna give you 15 grams of carbohydrate, okay, the noodles, it's the same thing. It's a third of a cup as well. You know how much that is? Not very much, right? One third, one third. So that's 30. And one of these little roll is another 15 grams. So already you got 45 grams of carbs there. So yeah, you can have these three things, but it's gonna have to be one third of this roll. But if you have a whole cup like this, this bottom thing here is showing, that's like a cup already. That one bowl right there, if you were to measure it using the standard measuring cup, that's one cup. That's 45 grams of carbohydrate already. Okay? So, but if you have vegetables, we're not going to count it, right? And if you have the meat in there, whatever meat that you can, you have protein-wise, okay, that's still going to be what? 45 grams of carbs. So you still have one more 15 grams of carbs you're allowed. Oh, Maybe you have lumpia. <laughs> okay, so as, as that lumpia has all the vegetables, okay, or some meat, you're only counting the wrappers. And these wrappers, if you go to the market, they have nutrition information on there. Take a look at what one wrapper is. Maybe you can have two of those for only 15 grams of carbs. So maybe you can have two of these. Does that make sense? It just depends on how you want to use up your 60 grams of carbohydrates. Now how about this puto? <laughs> okay, we have like a handout for you guys. Okay, if you want puto in there, let's say you wanna use up all your carbohydrates as puto, then you better not have any, anything else, any other carbohydrates. And crackers is also counted. So you can have all of this, you just have to stay within your allowance, that's all. And if you wanna challenge it, check your blood sugar before and two hours after, see where you're at. So this is what? Yams. So that also counts as a carbohydrate, okay? Half a cup. We got this, what is this, gabi. 
So we have two things here. So the root counts as a carbohydrate. It fits into that plate right there where the rice is. But the leaves which we eat, it can be counted in the vegetable part. So you can have this as well. You just have to count it as part of your allowance. It's all about the allowance. Like I said, hey, you can eat this, any of this food, just not too much. Okay, what is this? This is mungo. Okay, where does that fit in? So dried beans and peas, so that fits in there. That also uh, takes the place of the rice. So half a cup of that would be taking the place of that one-third cup of rice. So you get a little bit more uh, food for your carb allowance when you have that. It's got fiber too. So, and take a look at it. There's other things in there that it can be counted as a non-carb. You've got some, what is that, baboy? Yeah, there's, there's pork in there. <laughs> and some uh, greens, so that's the vegetable. So you can, you, you can have like, uh, it doesn't have to be on this plate. See, Filipinos, we don't, we don't eat like this, right? This is where the problem is, because you see this plate and you go, we don't eat like that. But, so anyway, that's what we're gonna, I'm gonna have a lot of pictures in here, and I want you guys to formulate stuff in your mind and how you can fit that into this meal, in, in this diabetes portion plate, okay? So, because I wanna, I just wanna keep showing this to you, because I want you to fixate this in your mind. Okay, so on the other side, we've got the fruit. So any of these fruits allowed, just not too much. So if you have like your, your meal with your rice and your ulam, people always say, well, for my, my dessert, I have a banana. Mm -hmm. So there you go, that's your other carbohydrate. So if you're having a whole cup of rice and you're just having ulam with just the vegetables and the meat, so you can have what? A small banana, that's about this size. That's about a 15 gram carbohydrate. Um, fruit or a small apple you know the size of the schoolboy apple not the big one if you have a big one if you want to eat all of that then you better cut down on the rice okay so it's just the it's just how you decide to use up your carbohydrates up to you and there's some milk there so if you have coffee and you put milk in there okay that's gonna count as carb so what else is left? Dairy. We're not much into dairy because I think most Filipinos are, have lactose intolerance. <laughs> but we find, we manage to get in there. We put it in a halo halo, right? Put it in our dessert. So remember, all those have carbs. And then you take one a step further and you get the sweetened condensed milk, okay? You need, that has added sugar. So that would have higher carbohydrates than say fluid milk. Okay, so a lot of Filipinos like sodas, cook with every meal. So is, I'm not saying that it's okay to have even the diet stuff very much, but if you are having three regular ones, I want you to switch that over to a diet um, your option. And then later on, cut it down and have other types of beverage. You can have um, iced tea, you can have hot tea, coffee, all of these are considered beverages that, that are non-caloric. Or you can have flavored sparkling water. You can try that. Lower chemicals, because otherwise if you're having those diet drinks, you're just having a lot of chemicals. That's not healthy either, right? So if you want to have a little uh, sparkling beverage, then try something with a little flavor in there. Or you can just get sparkling, plain sparkling water, and you can squeeze some lemon. And, you know, it tastes pretty good. It's very quenching. But once you add milk to any of this, you have to count it as a carb, right? Always drink your water. <laughs> okay, Filipino food and diabetes portion plate. So when you have a plate that looks like that, I want you to dissect it. We talked about, um, you know, the, the non-carbohydrate food on this plate. It doesn't look like the diabetes portion plate, right? But it's all there. There's your vegetables. There's your ampalaya. There's your, uh, what is that, carrots, and you've got sitao, which is your green beans, you've got your talong, that's your vegetables, right, in that diabetes portion plate. And then you can have maybe more meat than that, if you feel like you need to eat a little bit more to, to fill yourself, but don't eat any more rice. Okay, that's the one thing we need for you to measure, is that rice. So like I said, if you're only supposed to have 45 grams of carbohydrates, that would be one whole cup cooked, that's it. That means no bun, no roll, no crackers, no pan sitting there, no lumpia. What do you think? 
Is that too much carbs? If you have 60 grams of carbs that you're allowed, let's say. So here we've got, uh, the, I think, two different ulam in here, right? I'm thinking this is tofu. Tofu is a protein, so it counts less as a meat, like a protein to the left on that side right there, okay? And then you've got your potatoes. Potato is a carbohydrate. So if you want that potato, you have to count that as part of your total allowance for that meal. Unless if you want to have more rice, then you don't eat the potato. Or maybe you can do away with the lumpia because you want more rice. But if you want all of it, just count it. Maybe you have to decrease the rice to a third of a cup. And then you can have a half a cup potato. Okay, you have to kind of visualize that. So in the beginning, I want you guys to use your measuring cups to get an idea what a half a cup is. So the next time you look at a plate, you can kind of guesstimate. How about this? Making you hungry already. So you got the vegetables right there. So you can get really creative. You've got your tomatoes, you've got your onions, you've got your mushrooms, and maybe a little bit of vinegar. So, so far there's no carbohydrate yet, right, to speak of. And on the other side, there's, I think, more tofu in there. There's peppers, uh, maybe some meat in there too as well. So, so far we're not counting any of that as carbohydrate, right, because it's part of the vegetable section. And then we've got the, um, what is this thing, the eggs, salted eggs. All right, so, so far that's, that's in the protein section. And what about the meat there? That's a protein. So, so far so good, right? Now it's the rice you have to be careful with. So this is where that comes in. So, so other than rice, we have the pancit. So again, that where is that gonna fit into? Where the rice is. So when you guys take a look at any of these foods, I want you to dissect it, okay? Now you know there's chicken in there, so you know that's where the protein uh, in that section of the plate will go to, right? You've got your vegetables, but there's also potatoes. So where's potato go? Okay, where the rice is. You've got your carrots. Okay, now this thing here, see this is where it gets tricky because if there is like canned tomatoes in here, like to, canned tomato sauce, if you, if you put it up in there, it can count as a carbohydrate. But if it's just fresh tomatoes that you use maybe one tomato out of the whole dish, we're not going to count it. Okay, how about this? See, we got the potatoes, we got mainly the protein here, right? So this would be what? Both um, the protein part where the chicken is, and you've got the potato that's going to go where the rice is, because that's where the carbs is. How about this one? So you got the shrimp, that's your protein. And these are green vegetables, so is this a good one? It's good, right? Because it's, it's going to fulfill just the vegetable part and the protein part, and you still got your rice that you can have. How about this one? Pretty much the same thing, right? Okay. So we, all we've done is look at carbohydrates with the emphasis on keeping the blood sugar in good control. But many Filipinos, you know, when you're diagnosed with diabetes, you also have high blood pressure. <laughs> And also there's heart disease. So in the classes, we go through that as well. So in the portion where you have the, um, the meat, we want you to pick the leanest, lowest cholesterol, lowest saturated fat protein. So when it comes to beef, you want to get the pick the part of the animal where it's been exercised the most, the rump, the part that's really lean where you can't see any marbling. So you want to choose that. And when it comes to chicken or poultry, you want to choose the chicken breast or turkey breast, no skin. Okay? So let's look at the kare kare and see what it has in there. So we got oxtails. Like I said, if you don't have any problem with heart disease or anything like that, but let's say you have high blood pressure. Okay? So this is like, I just found this, um, this recipe online and it asks for one and a third pouch of kare kare mix. We use a lot of that, right? You go to the Asian market and there's all these packets that you could just add to the food. Well, you need to look in there to see what it has in it. So I found this one has peanuts, rice, flour cane, sugar, salt, okay? And just some, um, like a coloring. So one tablespoon of this it's already 180 milligrams of sodium. 
So if you're looking at this karikare and you're thinking, hey, that's, that's just going to cover uh, the vegetable part of my plate and the meat part. But then let's say after you eat this, your blood sugar goes up and you wonder why, what happened? Well, that's because in that recipe, there's sugar in that mix. Okay, so that's adding to the carbohydrate. So if you're really sitting there and calculating out every gram of carbohydrate, you have to count that. Okay, so what else? We've got the salt in here. So for people with high blood pressure, we want you to stay within the 2,000 to 3,000 milligrams of sodium per day. Well, what does that mean? A teaspoon of salt already is going to give you 2,300 milligrams of sodium. So a teaspoon of salt. So that's why if you're on a very strict low sodium diet, let's say you have heart failure, you can't even really use any salt in the cooking at all. And no salty foods like bacon, ham, sausages, and also no processed foods, because salt is used as a, a very cheap preservative. And so what else is, I think Luann was talking about this, how can you eat kare, kare without your bagoong alamang, right? That's your sauteed shrimp paste, very high in sodium. Okay, so you have to dissect not just for the carbohydrates, okay? If you have high blood pressure, if you have heart disease, if you have chronic kidney disease or anything like that, where you have to watch your salt, your fat, and your cholesterol, you have to make sure that you pick the leanest protein and you watch what you add to it when you are making the dish. It's easy when you do it yourself because you can control what's in, that, in there. But if you go out a lot, I want you to be able to know or be aware that there could be um, high sodium sources in there and you can actually taste it. But if you're used to a, like really salty foods all along, you may, not, you may not feel that. Okay, so here, it's, this one's pretty healthy, right? You've got your ampaleya, which is your vegetables. You've got your shrimp. Now, I highlighted the shrimp because if it's fresh shrimp, it's okay. But if you get the kind that's frozen, sometimes it is, um, they add some salt to it before they freeze it. So, it. so when it's thawed out, it doesn't get rubbery or it doesn't fall apart on you. So that could be a sodium source. And in here, you can basically, if you're making it yourself, um, you can maybe just adjust the salt because remember, a teaspoon of salt is going to be a lot of sodium. If this is the one I could find in, online, the ning deng with fish. The ning deng is just what? Basically vegetables in season, right? So let's take a look at what's in here. What's so bad about here? It's got fish. Okay, you've got your, um, which is your protein, right? So you have your vegetables, which are all good, your onions, your tomatoes to flavor it with. So what is the bad thing about this dish? The bagoong is that. Okay, so paksi na bagos, this is the same thing. This is all, these are really good recipes. So the bagos or any kind of fish that you can use, fresh fish, vinegar is good, water is good, garlic, onions, these are all good ingredients. And there's your salt. So the only thing that you have to modify there would be the salt that you use. So maybe you can use more uh, garlic and onions and ginger to flavor it. Or if you need to, you could have like maybe a salt packet on the side where that way you could control the amount that you consume. That way you can still use it as part of your allowance. So you can have this dish and you can use the chicken breast without the skin. Okay, I showed you this because on the other slide, you know, there's that marinated meat, right? And you're thinking, okay, well, that's protein. I can have that. Well, take a look again. If you have a problem, let's say, with your heart and your blood pressure, there's the soy sauce. And in this recipe, it's got 7-Up or soda, which has sugar. So you already know that this will have carbohydrate in it, even though it's on the protein side of that plate, right? And it also add, asks for sugar, five tablespoons of dark brown sugar. So when you go out to eat, you can see that that's probably not a very good choice. All right. So what else do we do when we have these food? We have sao sao. We have always things on the side that we dip things into. Okay? It's usually it's soy sauce or some kind of a, a, a fish sauce or the bagoong. Right? And so look at the ingredients. So everything adds up. 
So if you have a certain amount of grams of carbohydrate that you have to keep within, you have to take this into consideration and add it as part of your allowance. Okay, how about ketchup? So a tablespoon already has four grams of carbohydrates. So if you have something that you, you're using ketchup, you might not count it because you're not thinking of it, right? But it's there, it's hidden. Okay, soy sauce, look at, look at what you can save if you use the light soy sauce. Okay, and some of the dishes that we have tonight, I think we have, we've used um, some of these modifications. Okay, regular fish sauce. Okay, this one has 690 milligrams of sodium for one tablespoon. So that is a lot, especially if you're gonna use it, if it's already in the food and also if you use it for dipping sauces. But they do have some out there, vegetarian fish sauce. This one, I found this one and it's only like half that amount. So here is some bagoong. If you add that to the food already, there's this added sodium. So it's in there, very toxic. And not only that too, we have something that we put on the side that we, <laughs> where we, we eat it as well. It's not just in the food, but it's also on the side. Okay, so we talked about lunch and dinner. I'll be done in a minute. Okay, what about breakfast? <laughs> okay, so maybe if you're gonna have a lunch and dinner that's gonna reflect all the the, the food that we've just talked about, Filipino food, maybe at breakfast you have a typical American food. It's not gonna kill us, right? You have to say no. <laughs> so I was thinking the other day, oh, nobody ever eats that much, nobody gets served that much. Well, my brother and I went to a Filipino restaurant, and let me tell you, they gave us that much for one serving. So that could feed a family. But people do eat it. So now what you have to do is, is put this two in the diabetes portion plate. So we got the egg, right? So what is that at? Where does that fit into? So you've got, so it kind of fits there. You've got your protein, right? You've got your vegetable, that's your tomatoes, but there's the rice. So like I said, maybe once in a while, if you, your blood sugar especially tend to be higher in the morning, you're not gonna wanna have this kind of breakfast. So it once in a blue moon, it's fine. So again, just hidden sources of sodium and carbohydrates, okay? Because this is in the protein section, right? Thinking, oh, it's okay because it's in that plate, diabetes portion plate should be okay. So again, it's a, there's hidden sor source of sodium and it's got some carbohydrates in there because of the sugar that's added. So I always take a look at the, um, the ingredients and the nutrition facts. So if you're really on that strict, let's say sodium restriction, see that it's hidden right here, even though it's a chicken sausage and I think it's this lower fat, it doesn't mean it's low sodium. Okay, so like I said, once in a while, maybe you can have a non-traditional Filipino food and have some um, American type breakfast, which is really good. We have this also today. So I got the recipes in there in your handout. Okay, so that fits where? It fits in the protein section. It has some vegetables in there, so you can have maybe your, um, what do you call that, pandesal to balance it out. So you have this. I got this from the NIH and National Heart, Lung, and Board. And from here we have, we've got these um, for you to try. We got the mungung guisado that Eileen made and the fish dish that I just, I just clicked over. We all have that. And we also have this as well to try, and we've got the adobo manok. Okay, this is my brother when we decided to just kind of trial it out. This is what it looks like, it's beautiful. This is the fish dish and, also, and this is the ampalaya with the pork. So like I said, okay, the medications will be added along with your diet and your exercise, but it doesn't take the place of the diet and exercise. And you have to know your medications, you, know, you should know how it works, and take it at the time when you're supposed to take it. And so just as the eating will make your blood sugar go up, exercise can act as a medication, okay? It can lower your blood sugar. I don't care what you do, especially after you eat. Remember, whenever you eat, your blood sugar is gonna go up, but we don't want it to be over 180. It's not that you're gonna take more medication to kind of lower it unless you're on insulin, but you don't want to do that either. You'll be 600 pounds after you're done. You can have good blood sugar level, but you'll be overweight. 
but the exercise can really help bring that blood sugar down from maybe 200 down to the 180, which is your goal, right? Maybe all it takes is takes 20 minutes of walking after you eat. Or if you don't want to walk, you can dance, you can hike, okay? Or you can do karaoke. <laughs> Filipinos are very well known for that. So I, I, I picked this because look what she's doing. She is moving. So anyway, no matter how, whatever kind of exercise you do, please just move because that is going to help lower the blood sugar. Okay, thank you.